today I want to talk to you about the importance and the power of having courage. Just having the courage to say some things that you need to say and do some of the things that you need to do. Courage is often confused with confidence. I know for a long time people would always tell me, you don't have confidence, you're not confident, you're not confident. And I would argue them, and I would say, yes, I am. I do have confidence. I do believe now, in myself. I do believe in my business. I do believe in my brand. I do believe much. in my products and services. But they would still, my coaches would say, but you don't have confidence. And they didn't really get it. And what I found out was that I did have confidence, but what I was mm-hmm. lacking in the beginning was courage. I had all the confidence in the world. I knew that what I had to offer was great. I knew that I could change lives because I had changed my own and I had already changed the lives of the women around me. But what I did not have was the courage to step out there in a bigger way, the courage to get in front of more people with my message, the courage to be, you know, in the public eye and and really put in a position to be scrutinized and judged and criticized. I didn't have the courage to do that. So I want you to understand that there is a difference between confidence and courage, and that's why I talk about them separately in the series. You may have the courage to do things. You Maybe you're not afraid, but you don't have the confidence. You still don't believe in yourself. Or maybe you have the confidence. You do believe in yourself. You know what you have is great, or you know who you are as an amazing woman, but you don't really have the courage to step out there and do some things, to chase your dreams and reach your goals or start new friendships or relationships or to take action on certain dreams that you have because you're lacking the courage. Courage is tied into fear. Even though you can believe in yourself and be confident, you still may have a fear that is blocking you, a fear that is in the way. And for me, that fear was judgment and criticism. But what I know to be true is that people are going to judge and criticize you anyway. So it really wasn't a reason for me to hold back and to stop myself from moving forward. And many women struggle with this. We go through that I don't know, you know, if I want to do this or if I want to go there or if I want to say this because of what people are going to think or what they're going to say. That's not necessarily a lack of confidence, but that is a lack of courage. Mm-hmm. You got to have the balls, so to speak, to get out there and put yourself in a position for people to talk about you or to not like you or to say things that may hurt you. So having courage is super powerful because when you have the courage, you go about your life and you do things and you make decisions based off of what you know you want to do Very or what you know you have message. to do and not based off of what you're afraid may happen as a result. <clears throat> if you think about it, If you think about someone like Beyonce, I know in one of her interviews she shared how she can be sometimes shy and be an introvert, but when she's on stage, she turns and talks about her fear. Well, she has to create this alter ego because she didn't have the courage to just get up there as Beyonce. But when she's Sasha Fierce, she has that courage. It helps her to overcome her fear of being in front of large crowds and, you know, overthinking what may happen, what people may say or think. And so it's the same thing that we have to apply in our lives when sometimes, like myself, I'm an introvert. And maybe you're an introvert or maybe you're an extrovert or somewhere along the spectrum because sometimes I'm an introvert, sometimes I'm an extrovert. But most of the time I'm an introvert and I have to really pull on that courage to get myself out there to do certain things, to say certain things, to go certain places because I just rather be in my own little world. And so just like Beyonce uses Sasha Fierce as a way to have courage and to do the things that she's been gifted to do, you may create an alter ego for yourself. Doesn't mean you're going to have some, you know, character that you're going to become, but really somewhere that you're going to pull from, somewhere that you're going to be able to pull from to do the things that you need to do. Because sometimes when we are who we are, we are too afraid to do things or say things or make moves or take action. So I want to share with you today um, just a couple things about seven um, reasons you need to have courage. And the seven reasons you're probably going to need to become someone different in that moment to say what it is that you need to say or do what women it is that you need to do. It's still you, but it's a bolder it you. It's an even even more confident you and even more courageous you. It's a fearless you. So you're not becoming some you know necessary alter ego, so to speak, but you're becoming more of who you need to be to get things done. So one of the reasons you need to have courage is to say no. The reason that most people will say yes in a situation when they should be saying no is because they lack courage. They don't feel bold enough. They don't have the courage and they don't feel bold enough to say no. No, I don't want to go there. No, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to date you. 
No, I don't want to be with you. No, I'm not going to loan you this money. No, I don't want to, you know, hang out. Or no, I don't want to go out with you guys tonight. You know, no, I I don't want to apply for that job because that doesn't fit my character or my passion or what I'm looking for. See, people try to force you to do things all the time. And if you don't have the courage to say no, you're going to find yourself doing what everybody else wants you to do, going where everybody else wants you to go, dating people who want to date you, but you don't want to date them because you did not have the courage to say no. It has to be this boldness about you that's okay and comfortable saying no to things that just are not for you, just not right for you or out of alignment with who you are and where you want to go. I say no all the time. No has become actually my favorite word. And here's why. Every time that I am able to say no to something that I know is not for me, guess what? It allows me the space, the energy, the time, the resources the motivation to say yes to something Mm. that is. And that is number two. That's the second reason you have to have courage is because you need to know when to say yes. And you need to have the courage to say yes. Yes, I'm going to go for that job. Yes, I'm going to date this guy that I feel is out of my league or someone that is out of, you know, the norm of who I typically date or entertain. Yes, I'm going to apply back to college. I'm going to go back to school. Yes, I'm going to start my workout Mm -hmm. regimen today. Even though I've been overweight my whole life, I'm going to start today. I'm going to join the gym. Whatever it is, you have to be willing to say yes. And it takes courage to say yes. Because saying yes means I'm going to do something. I'm going to take action. I'm going to make a move. So a lot of people don't want to say yes because they're afraid of what may happen. They fear the results. They fear, you know, the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of rejection. All of those things start to stir up in you, which is why you're not saying yes to the things that you should be saying yes to. You have to have courage in the times to say no, but you also have to have courage in the times to say yes because it can be very scary to say yes to something because saying yes is making a commitment and a lot of people are afraid of commitment so when you say yes I'm going to do this yes I'm going to try that yes I'm going to go there then you're saying uh, yes and you're making a commitment to yourself to do it and then if you don't do it you know that you're going to feel bad about yourself you're going to feel judged you're going to feel criticized you're going to feel like everybody's talking about you because you didn't do what you said you were going to do Mm -hmm. which is why a lot of people won't say yes in the first place So get in the habit of saying no when you need to say no and also saying yes when you need to say yes. The third reason you need to have courage is because it takes courage to try. It takes courage to try. A lot of people are not trying things out. They're not trying things out because they don't have the courage to try. They don't want to test the waters. They don't want to take a risk. They don't want to fail. But let me tell you something, it's so powerful when you could just try something out, when you could just test it out, just see what's going to happen. Yes, it takes courage. Yes, you might not make it. You might not win. You may not, you know, finish whatever the case is, whatever the fear is. It's okay. Try. When you try, then you find out whether it was for you or not. Now, I will say this, when I'm coaching my clients, and if I didn't tell who I am, if you're new to my podcast, I'm Angel Richards, and I'm the owner of HelpingOthersTransform.com, and what I do is I help women to declutter their lives and create breakthroughs and become unstoppable. And I tell a lot of my clients that we don't try. You're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. Because really trying is that little gray area where nothing gets done. However, in the case of having courage, you do have to have the courage to try. You have to have the courage to take a risk. You have to have the courage to get out of your comfort zone and do something different. So that is definitely a a space where you will need to pull from having courage over being fearful. Okay, so in order to try something new, to try something different, you have to have the courage to do it. This is that time where a lot of people, when you're sharing with them what you're going to try out, what you're going to try to do, they start to discourage you. Oh, well, what if it doesn't work? What if, you know, what if you don't win? What if you don't finish? What if you don't get it? You know, and they try to discourage you from trying because people people. are very afraid to try different things, to try new things, to try out and be judged or try out and be rejected or try out and have to be, you know, out of their comfort zone because this is something that they normally wouldn't do. And so people, you have to be very careful who you talk to about things that you want to try out or things that you're saying yes to because people will try to talk you out of it if they are uncomfortable, if they don't have the courage. 
So hang around people who are very courageous and very bold in making decisions because that will be contagious. That will spill off over into your life. That will make you realize, you know what, it's not so bad. It's not so scary. I should try it. But when you hang around a bunch of people who are afraid to do things, afraid to take action, they're all talk and no walk, then guess what? That's who you become. You become an average of the people that you spend time with. And if you're hanging around people who have no clarity, who have no confidence, who have no courage, then that is who you'll become. You'll become that same woman. All right? The fourth time when we need um, courage is to let go. You have to have courage when it's time to let go. And this is really, really huge. Because the reason that so many people... um, even become my clients or take my classes is because they're struggling with this one thing. They're struggling with letting go. See, in order to declutter your life, to remove the clutter, you have to be willing to let go of some things. It could be thoughts. It could be your words. It could be your actions, your habits, your relationship, your friendships, your clients. It could be so many different things that you have to let go of in order to live a clutter-free life, in order to have more happiness and love and confidence and success. So a lot of people struggle with this. And it takes courage to let go. There's been so many situations in my life personally where I've had to let go of friendships over 20 years. Love this person. This is my girl. But you know what? When I realized that she actually wasn't down for me and she wasn't really supportive and there was some envy and there was some, you know, things going on behind my back. And that is not a true friendship. And I had to let go. It hurt. It was hard. But I had to have the courage to let go and to know that, you know what? I may not have another friend like her. I may not meet someone new. I may not be able to share things that I've shared in this deep, personal, long-term relationship with someone else. But that, that courage will help you to overcome the fear of letting go and holding on to something that, you know, has that season has expired. I've had to let go of several relationships, even going through a divorce. That was one of the most challenging times in my life, letting go of a marriage. Because you want Please to like, fight for it. You, for it, you want to work for it, you want it to work, you don't want to go through the disappointment, you can't believe it's happening, you feel really discouraged, you question yourself, you wonder where did I go wrong, what did I do wrong, what could I have done differently, and then you try to hold on and you hang on to something again, whose season or that season has expired. So it takes courage Women to let go. So many people could not believe that I went through with a divorce after such a short period of time, but it took courage to do that. Did I love my husband? Absolutely. Do I still love him? Absolutely. I'm in love with him still. Even though we're not together, I love him because he was a friend before he became my husband. But we didn't work out as a couple. And that happens sometimes. You have to understand that not everything that you want is for you. Not everything you want is what you need. Not every good person is good for you. And so we mutually agreed to separate. So I still love him. He's still a great guy, but he's not great for me. And so I had to have the courage to do that. And also it came with clarity, understanding that. that And then having confidence, believing in myself that I'm going to be fine after this. So all of these things that I'm teaching in this Women Empowerment Series, I've already experienced, I've already been through, I've already used as tools to get myself to where I am. And that's a very powerful, confident, unstoppable place. So you have to have the courage to let go. Sometimes it's going to be employment. It's going to be a job that you're on. You've been on that job for a long time. You're not advancing. You're not being challenged. You're bored. Mm -hmm. You're just tired of going to work every day. You're discouraged. And sometimes you have to take the risk. You have to, again, try something different. You have to be courageous enough to walk away from the situation, to walk away from the job, to step out of that comfort zone and to apply for something new. And a lot of people won't do that. They'll stay on the job 20, 30 years knowing that they absolutely hate it, knowing it has nothing to do with their purpose in life, but they will stay there and complain and be miserable versus letting it go and trying something else. I'm not saying quit your job and don't have an income to support your family, but come up with a plan. You know, I help clients all the time create an action plan that they can use over the next six to nine months or sometimes even three to nine months to transition from what they're doing to what they really want to do. It's so possible, but you just have to believe in yourself and have the courage to say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to step out on faith and I'm going to move forward in this direction. Now, stepping out on faith does not mean stepping out on foolishness, which a lot of people do all the time. They walk away from relationships that are perfectly fine, just having an issue. See, relationships are going to have challenges and problems. You have to know the difference. 
And so some people let go of good men or they let go of good women or they let go of great jobs. They let go of opportunities that really could be good for them because, again, they don't have clarity or maybe there's some confidence issues, some self-esteem issues, or they're just not courageous enough to do what it takes. And that leads me into number five. When you need to have courage is when it's time to fight. You have to have courage when it's time to fight for something that you believe in, fight for something that you want. It isn't the time to let it go. You know it's not time to let it go. You know that it is time to fight for what you have, fight for what you want, you have fight for yourself. what you believe in. Do I have and so fight if you're willing it? to do that, if you're willing to fight for something, then that is going to be that courage that is required to do it. Because fighting for something means that you have to go against something, go against what your family believes or thinks. Maybe even go against what your man thinks or believes. Go against what your friends think or believe. Go against even sometimes what you're used to or what your belief is. You know, going against the grain. Sometimes you have to fight against what's normal, what everybody else is doing, the mediocre. You know, saying, you know what, I don't want to be mediocre. I'm going to go against mediocrity in my life. I'm going to go against the Mm -hmm. ordinary and be extraordinary. And so you have to fight for something. It means that you have to go against something which causes resistance. And resistance is something that causes us a lot of times to push back, to really push back. We don't want to go against anyone. We don't want to, you know, ruffle any feathers. We don't want to upset anyone. We don't want to offend anyone. We don't want to create a problem or an issue. And so we settle for whatever is, even though it's creating a problem and an issue for us, We settle for what it is versus going against it. So sometimes you're going to have to have the courage to fight for what it is that you want or fight against what it is that you don't want. The number six time when you're going to need to have courage is when you have to forgive someone. It absolutely takes courage, a very courageous woman to forgive, to not only forgive someone else and to say, you know what, I forgive you for what you've done to me. I forgive you for what you've put me through. I forgive you for what you've said about me. I forgive you for where you've caused me to be in my life. But to also forgive herself. To also forgive herself. That is going to be an extremely powerful time in your life when you have the courage to not only forgive other people, but to forgive yourself. It takes courage to forgive yourself. Just as much as it takes to forgive someone else. When it requires courage to forgive someone else is because we, we sometimes equate forgiveness with, you know, being weak. You know, it's not weak to forgive. It's not silly to forgive. Like You're not share. being um, notification a pushover button. when you forgive. You're not being dumb when you forgive. You are forgiving not even for yourself but or for them but for yourself. You are forgiving because you are taking your power back when you forgive. When you don't forgive people, they have control over your thoughts. They have control over your emotions. They have really control over your life because everything that they say or do is going to impact you. It's going to affect you. So you have to have the courage to forgive them knowing that I'm going to let go. I'm going to release the anger, the hatred, the bitterness, whatever the frustration is towards that person. I'm going to let it go. We don't like to let people off the hook, which is why we don't really want to forgive because you feel like you're letting people off the hook. It's not that you're letting them off the hook. It's not that you're not holding them accountable or that you're condoning what they did or you're saying it's okay, it doesn't matter. No, what you're saying is I'm not going to let you control me emotionally. I'm not going to let you control me mentally. I'm not going to let you control me spiritually. So to forgive other people is extremely powerful and it takes the courage to do that, but it also takes the courage to forgive yourself. To forgive yourself for allowing it to happen. Forgive yourself for allowing it to be prolonged. You know, sometimes you you knew what you should have done, you know, days, weeks, months ago, even years ago, but you hung in there and you settled or you tolerated, and you have to forgive yourself for that. Forgive yourself for making some mistakes and making some poor decisions. Forgive yourself for allowing certain things to take place. You have to know how to forgive yourself as well, and it takes courage to do that. It takes courage to say, you know what, I was wrong, or I did something that I shouldn't have done, or you know what, I played a part in this situation. It takes courage to be able to do that, to be real with yourself and honest with yourself about the position that you were in, the role that you played, the mistakes that you made. So it takes courage in order to forgive others and to forgive ourselves. And number six or seven, the final reason why we need to have courage is to do something different. You have to have the courage to do something different in your life. 
what you're doing right now, if it's not working for you, you have to be bold enough and courageous enough to say, this isn't working. I need to do something different. This is not working. See, I believe that you're perfect, whole, and complete, that there's nothing missing and nothing lacking in you. Maybe in your life there are some things missing, some things lacking. Maybe there is some things in your life not working and that needs to be fixed. You don't need to be fixed, but there are things in your life that need to be fixed, that need to be changed, that need to be different. And so you have to understand that, that it's going to take courage to do something different. It's going to take courage to say no. It's going to take courage to say yes. It's going to take courage to try. It's going to take courage to let go, to fight, to forgive, to do something different. Everybody else may be doing one thing, but you have to have the courage to do something else if something else is where you should be. Okay, everybody else may be going one way, one direction in life. But if you know that's not the direction that you need to be going in, you have to have the courage to say, you know what, I'm going to have to let you guys go that way, but this is the direction that I need to go into. Okay? Some people may, you know, tell you, hey, you should do this or you should do that. And you have to have the courage to do the opposite. Hey, that's not for me. That's not the route I want to go. That's not the path that I'm taking. That's not the career for me. That's not the business I want to start. That's not the man or the relationship for me. You have to have courage in every... Okay, yes, this is Leslie Just Wondering, also known as Storyteller. Now, the purpose of me letting you listen to this, you too, and my 45 subscribers and hopefully new subscribers, is to let you know that's about women in power. Not bashing. Know the difference. You have to have courage. And please do not get it confused with confidence, but they do work hand in hand. If you like this video, please share, subscribe, and thumbs up. Bye.